it's almost like any residue of any masks that were mm-hmm. there were completely stripped back. Stripped so back, the minute yeah. we made that commitment to each other, it's like then mm. it's yeah. what's and all and in total unconditional love mm. and no judgment. And, yeah. Brilliant. you know, it's great. It was great for him because I think he sort of mm-hmm. was trying to play perfect husband, perfect boyfriend a little bit yeah. too much. And now it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. give me your, give me your shadow, yes. show me it. Yeah. Yes, yes. And on, talking yeah. of... Sl- Spirals and circles, oh, and you're actually planning on having the wedding in that space where you have that right. first kiss, aren't That's you? right. The first Chicken. kiss, the engagement, and the wedding, <laughs> same place. Maybe we'll live there one day, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah. And, and so it yeah. makes me wonder that, you know, being drawn to that place, that there was probably some kind of past life connection that um, yeah, the two of you had to, yeah. to that place. What, what definitely feels um, clear is that as soon as I met her, I felt at home with yeah. her. Mm-hmm. And there's that familiar- familiarity from a feeling point of view. Yeah. I, and another thing, when I was in, um, where was it? We visited Verona. And when I visited Verona, I felt that I'd been there with her before, right. and I'd be standing opposite Bill, oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've been there before, and there was the, uh, the church, and, and, and there was definitely a feeling of Romeo and Juliet where we were not allowed. And this, it feels like now we're just enjoying that. Yeah. We, we are allowed. Wow. You know, the, Together yeah, there's time. definitely, that was just a feeling that I had in Verona, very clear. Yeah. Um, but Italy, those feelings come quite a lot for me. Yeah. Only in Italy, you know, it's, it's quite funny. Yeah. That country. Yeah. Well, it is a, I mean, it is the, the play, the country of love, isn't it, really? Yeah. So. But back to what you're saying, um, what struck me from what you're saying is that as soon as you decided to commit, everything then just flowed. And isn't it interesting that in commitment we find freedom? Yeah. When you think commitment yeah. is actually a trapping, yeah. but commitment actually there's a lot of freedom. Uh, in it was that, when you know? when we when we got engaged. Yeah. This, I think, when you know it's really right, too. Mm-hmm. I had a sense of relief. N- not about being engaged, not from that 3D perspective. Mm-hmm. Just that, you know, we, we, would, we were both on that same page that I'd found him and that he... Because mm-hmm. I was waiting for him my whole... I knew Tony was coming into my life. Oh, I knew there was someone. And it wasn't a random someone. There was mm-hmm. someone specific I was waiting for in this life. And no one had ever really come close to it, you know, I kept meeting lots of different people and, mm-hmm. and it was almost like we did have this moment when we met mm-hmm. and it wasn't like, I didn't register it as love at first sight, although it, it was. And I said this in my, my wedding, I did a speech at my wedding, but the first time I met him I went to go and view a flat, he was mm. a, a, one of the housemates. And I'd spoken to the other guy on the phone and didn't hadn't met Tony at all, but he opened the door to me. And he opened the door and in that moment it was like time stood completely still. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel it like a lightning bolt. I felt it like uh-huh. when I looked in his eyes, they were like, it was like looking into infinity. It was like looking exactly. into eternity and it went on and on and on. And I felt this very ancient soul, very wise being, but it was hilarious uh-huh. because he had a skinhead, was wearing a hoodie, mm-hmm. looked like a thug, <laughs> looked <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Um, if you took in the pack, yeah. like real wide boy kind of like, and I was like mm. there with my little handbag going, yeah. I'm not sure I can live with you. <laughs> but it was at that moment that I looked in his eyes and I saw the kindness mm-hmm. that went on for eternity. Yeah. And I thought, I'm safe with this person. And that yeah. was my first thought. That's lovely. But it felt ancient and it felt this connection that, that was there for, mm-hmm. and, that, and that was what I wrote this wedding song about that I wrote for our wedding was, mm-hmm. you know, that when I look into your eyes, it's, it's everything. And, it's and beautiful. Yeah. So... I do think that souls come together and Mm -hmm. when they're meant to come together and that everything aligns and um there's a certain um, i get a a feeling of a certain grounded simplicity and a holding yeah yeah which allows i imagine you to you know sort of travel through the cosmos and all the different emotional (laughs) feelings and know that there's somebody who's very light-hearted and there and yeah. And just very down to earth yeah. and, and playful. Yeah. He is as a soul. Yeah. He it's is an ascended get... master. Yeah. He doesn't know it. Okay. He sort of knows it, but he doesn't know it. And That's he's nice. he's telepathic, he reads my mind all the time. That's great. <laughs> so yeah, it is you're you're absolutely right. He yeah. does he kinda of holds this yeah. holds the fort, holds a safe container. Yeah. And 
you know, almost lets me, because of, cause of we know of the spiritual path, it's not easy. You do come apart, you yeah. unravel. Um, and I've been allowed to unravel and unravel yeah. and unravel. And he hasn't always coped well with it. I'm not going to give him all yeah. the credit. Um, yeah. But he has learnt right. a lot from that as well. So and dance, yeah, you learn. Yeah. And I think that's the, the masculine and feminine, isn't it? Yes. It's symbolic of what goes on within ourselves. Absolutely. But then within the... I love that you mentioned that. And I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well on the masculine and feminine. Because mm. I know you're, you're quite familiar with those two yeah. as well. Very um, much so. I'll just say a, a quick thing that... For me, what feels really, really true is that there's a masculine and a feminine within everybody. Yeah, and every man, woman, child, dog, tree, yeah, yeah. anything, there's both. And when I'm looking out into the world and how everybody seems to be so charged and uh, upset about, you know, this whole idea of uh, sort of gender identity. Yeah. If we were to just admit or tune into the masculine and feminine within all of us, then... There is no separation anymore. Everybody's yeah. there, all of it. We are everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the last thing uh, to, to say on that is that I don't think I would ever be able to sustain a relationship with my fiancé if I didn't look into the masculine uh, fear, which is, for me, the fear of not being good enough mm -hmm. and wanting to prove to the world that I am by accumulating things, whether it's fame, power, yeah. you know, whatever it is. And then on the feminine side, the fear of abandonment, mm -hmm. the fear of separation and being alone. I think that I, and I had those two fears very strongly growing up. If I didn't go into them, there would be no relationship. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And again, it's the point that everybody has to find that place within in order to be in a place where you can have a relationship. Firstly, you have to learn to love yourself, mm -hmm. which always sounds like a bit of a cliche, but in mm -hmm. doing that, it means that you do have to find and accept all parts of self. Right. What most people are trying to do is trying to be perfect mm. either on the outside mm -hmm. to look a certain way mm -hmm. so that they can be loved or they are completely shutting down and denying aspects of self as you've said, mm -hmm. you know, being able to go in and, and be the shadow and bring the shadow mm -hmm. aspect to a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, trying to be happy all the time or trying to be mm -hmm. good all the time or trying to be the nice person and not actually owning mm -hmm. your deep truths mm -hmm. about the, the you know the, the challenges mm -hmm. that life can actually provide you with and recognizing that yeah. yeah all aspects of the nature have to be included included right and the way society has gone is that i think the lines have been blurred so much into mm -hmm. what's what mm -hmm. so you know in previous generations mm -hmm. men were the money earners Right. Were the homemakers. Right. It was a really clear distinction. Right. Everybody knew where they were at. Yeah, yes. the men went out and got jobs, and the women stayed at home and they looked after the children and right. they took care of the home. Right. And as things have shifted, and we've got more, kind, you know, so called equality in mm -hmm. the workplace, although obviously it's not always completely mm -hmm. equal, as yeah. we know financially, but those lines have blurred. So now women are actually yeah. going out to work as well and competing with the men. Right. And then, you know, the men the, the men in order to be men in a relationship right. are battling with a woman that can sometimes be equally as masculine as them. Mm. Right. So it's like, who's playing what role? Right. And I think it's and all got, turns, right. yeah, but it's all got right. very confusing. You mm -hmm. know, who pays for the bill when one's, you know, and sometimes the women are earning more money than the men. And, you know, I think it's created a bit of a minefield. Right. And then on top of that, the idea that, you know, and I, I do go back to the very primal thing of men needing to be the hunters. Mm. Right. I think men yeah. need to be, you know, yes. in, in, and it's, this is not a feminist yeah. thing, trust yeah. me, yeah. but I just think men need to be able to lead and in relationships. It's the warrior. They need, to be the, the warrior. They need to be the warrior. They need to be the hunter. They need to be the one that, yeah. that does the pursuing and the woman yes. needs to be it's very, very the, interesting the, the receiver. Yeah. And I've, I've talked about this before yeah. where in a dance, you know, where the man yeah. will lead and a woman will follow the lead of the man right. it doesn't mean they're any less than or it doesn't mean they're contributing yeah. less in any way to it but it's just different positions that they, they play in that and i think it's become very very hard for women to accept that and to just receive mm. right yeah and to allow man to be a man and allow women to, to trust, I, I mean, to trust. To receive. i know right. yeah. and i mean and i've yeah. talked a lot about this in that i do sometimes struggle my masculine side is is you know strong. it's very 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 strong yeah. And when you say masculine, are you talking about decision making and structure? Decision making, structures, that kind of stuff. you know, mm -hmm. providing for myself, looking after right. myself, uh, just choices. Choices, not, um, you know, not, right. not yeah. very independent, yeah. not, you know, I've, I've battled, right. had so many fights with, with uh, you know, partners over the years and right. not wanting them to even pay for me because I yeah. didn't want to feel beholden to anybody. 
And so not being able to just sit back and yeah. be feminine and receive and then hold gratitude yeah. and, and have an exchange because you, you know, you can give yeah. in different ways. And uh, it's become, I think that's become really, really hard. Yeah. To, to find those lines it's again true. where a woman can be a woman and a man, a man can be a man. man. And then unconsciously, yeah. they just, it, it then just fits together. So when you've got like all four mm-hmm. aspects that are all battling at the same time, I think mm-hmm. it just creates confusion. Do you get does it does it sustaining that does does it make you feel tired? Is it a sub completely sub? I mean, you're conscious of it, but do you ever get tired of like sustaining that independent warrior aspect for yourself? Well, I mean, I would I probably until you take doing all of the deep work that I've yeah. done, I didn't even know I was doing it. Yeah, uh-huh. I had no idea. Yeah until mm. really digging into the depths of it but yeah it's exhausting yeah trying to hold everything together yeah and right. everything and then you know Absolutely. potentially it's a balance it, it is a, it was all about yeah. balance yeah. but you know finding mm. it then very very difficult to meet someone that could match me energetically yeah. because i'm so strong anyway that to find a man is actually mm-hmm. going to be able to step up to be a man in my world which requires to be even more masculine than i already mm. am it's quite a big ask Oh, it's maybe the other way, Laurie. Maybe you need someone who's more in touch with his feminine side. Yeah, maybe that is the nature. Maybe that's the better. Because uh, I think that statistically, I think yeah. men are well, that in, seventy percent. That would need to be their balance. To, yeah. yeah, yeah, the balance. Yeah, I mean, I've t- tried to. Tony's the homemaker in our family. Like you know, he runs around in his little pinny. Sorry, Tony. We shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't do this on camera. You're very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have any weird stuff, guys. <laughs> but yeah, like you know, puts his apron on and yeah. cooks the meals and looks after the cat. There you and, go. So, you know, it's so a, there's the balance all, of that. But I, yeah, I, I yeah. think that I think what I what I've learned from this is that rather than listening to what society cons- uh, considers what a man or a woman should do, mm. tune into our nature, and every, yeah. Any, yeah. every one of us will have a different balance. Absolutely. So, for example, you know, growing up, I would say I was sort of 50-50, maybe a little bit more on the feminine side. I liked things, I liked to receive, and now I'm much more towards the masculine side. Mm. But who knows, maybe it's because I'm living in London, maybe it's this stage of my life, maybe everything changes with children, no, it's um, just us, I mean, uh, I'm a Gemini Cancer cusp. Ah, that's yeah. a nice combo. Yeah. Air, water. Pisces ascendant. Ah, so I've got feeling. Pisces moon. Yeah. 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 But that, that whole thing about feminine and masculine, it's really, really interesting. It is. But even um, when you think about dating nowadays, the fact that for most people, it's not... It, the, the dynamic has changed where you would go, you would yeah. meet, you connect with somebody, you know, yeah. in, in your situation, which, you know, that's the old fashioned way where yeah, you go fashioned. somewhere, you're both yeah. doing something you love and you meet and you connect. Yeah. Perfect, really. Yes, you know. But what most people do is that they pick up an app on their phone and then, and they, and then they choose. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, man that's all of them are choosing yes. yeah. based well, on yeah. nothing other than no connection, well, that, just you, based on nothing. You've got no feelings like. really There's no feeling, yeah. there's no connection. And then, yeah. of course, when the people meet, is I mean, yeah. and I don't say that. I mean, I do know people that have met and have had mm-hmm. long, sustaining relationships. It's not to say that apps you know, it, that it doesn't work for mm-hmm. everybody, but I think for the majority of people, it's a very instant. It's a non-feeling yeah. thing, and because there's no connection, it tends not to be sustained. Mm. Yeah. It tends to be very quick, mm-hmm. and you know, there's an, and, but women are also doing the choosing, yeah. and women are doing the pursuing. Yeah. yeah. And so I think energetically, primarily, I think that this is part of the thing that isn't working. Yeah. And there's a lot of frustration in relationships, yeah. I think. I used to result. get frustrated about that. I yeah. used to really were single for a long time and wanted wanted the romance, wanted mm-hmm. to, you know, the romance, it doesn't seem to be there anymore. The chivalry, the romance, yeah, I know, like it's court, it, woman, I, I want it. to, to, be, I want to I receive, it. I want chivalry. to be feminine, mm-hmm. yeah. I want to, you know, have the man make the, you know, be a little bit more forthcoming. Right. Yeah, but there was that lack of trust there too because yeah. so many had misused that and abused that trust yeah. so yeah it's interesting I, I think that for, for me the if i were to give a solution to this uh, definitely for me it would be committing to uh, explore the feminine as much as i can and yeah. explore the masculine Absolutely. as much as i can and i'll fall where i fall yeah and wherever i connect with is whoever i connect with Absolutely. you know and as i change i'm sure my environment changes yeah you know what i mean for example my fiance is very strong at times right. and then very soft at times so we take it in turns yeah which is the um, perfect right. solution because you yeah. kind of know where you are 
Yes. Yes, they're one taking the, the step forward yes. when they need to. Well, and the that's, fire, and exactly, water. That's the beautiful dance, yes, isn't the dance, it? And that's when you yeah. have the dance, where you yeah. have the balance of the dance. That's right. right, the beautiful dance. Yeah. I like yeah. I like that term. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is. Like yeah. the tango. You like the tango? <laughs> <laughs> well, not always like the tango. You might want it to be a waltz sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it just needs to be a waltz. Yeah. <laughs> right. And a foxtrot from now and again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. There's the yeah. slow loving, yeah. you know, rocking and Absolutely. Yes, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if more people, and I know I've said this before, but I am going to say it again, if more people did old time dancing, oh, I great. think that the world would be a better place because people would learn how to receive and how to lead and how yeah, to lovely. how to flow yeah. on that dance. I think it should be taught at school. Oh, absolutely. You know, in Ireland, when you grow up, that's part of it. Yeah, we used to dance yeah. Yeah. And in fact, when I went to Ireland this year, it was amazing when I went at Christmas because even at, even at the discos, even at the parties, mm -hmm. there'll be a section yes. where it's Irish music and then everyone gets up. That's great. And they waltz or they... You have the so Irish, uh, you're Irish, right? Yes. So, okay, very good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so the, you know the mad Celtic thing. Yeah, very good. But a guy, a guy jumped up and asked me to dance because I've been waltzing with my father, uh, so okay. they kind of know that you can That's dance. Nice. So he pulls me up, and it was, do you know, it was so cute because nice. he was he was a bit jumpy. <laughs> he was clearly new mm -hmm. to the, the the concept of of the dance. Probably very excited that he was showing off his moves. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but obviously really excited that he was there dancing. And, and mm -hmm. you know, my dad and I have talked about this before. You see a lot of people out there who mm -hmm. haven't learned. And then you see them watching people that can dance, mm -hmm. and you see them itching. And sometimes they get up and they're doing it, but they're only doing you know two <laughs> steps and they're yes, doing it properly. Yeah. And the guy said, "Is this okay? Because I've just learned to oh, dance." That's sweet. That's so and it turned, sweet. Out, it turned out that the yeah. DJ was actually mm -hmm. coming in regularly to the town to teach people how to dance. Oh, and I said nice. to him, "Do you know what?" I said, "You're wonderful." Oh, that's I said, lovely. "It's wonderful." Isn't and I great? said, "And I just think it's so fantastic that you're yeah. actually that you've just learned to dance." Now. Like I said, so keep it up. I said, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And he went off with a big grin on his face. And, nice. But I just thought that was magnificent that people were in this you know, little village in yeah. Ireland actually making the efforts to do that. Yes. Because there's nothing more amazing than someone that can dance. That's great. Just for any of the men out there that are watching. And the women as well. But, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And dance in a in a in a nice way, not trying to be your backpack in a night. Backpack. Call them backpacks. No way. When you're in a, when you're when you when you <laughs> well, backpack is that's true. Yeah, yeah. But when you're dancing in a club as a woman and men come up behind you and try and do the like oh, dirty yes, dancing, oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. The, okay. the non verbal chat you up. Yeah, wow. it's not great. So I used to get really sharp elbows. Wow. <laughs> it was code. My friends would say you have a rucksack. Oh wow. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, you're coming from behind it uh, without the person looking. Yeah. It's not, it's not, not a good. It's not, not right. good. But, it, but it is a thing. Right. You've oh. obviously not done it because you're, yeah, you know, you're not like that very so, much. No, yeah. You're a nice honouring man. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I mean, I think balance. That's right. Balance of everything and just being permission or being given permission. Yeah. To be who you are, warts and all, and to know that you don't have to yeah. change. And it's, uh, I think the bottom line for me, it's worth the effort of working through yeah. all these fears, the fear of abandonment, fear of not being good enough, yeah. the fear of being trapped. It's worth it because out on the other side, there's an intimacy that's so oh, yeah. sweet yeah. where you end up being with a best friend Absolutely. who, yeah. and you have all these benefits too, you know, but it's a best friend who... It's that soulmate feeling, which yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's worth. And you did the it's work. It's worth it. Yeah. You yeah. spent a lot of well, time doing the work, didn't you? Yes, so, I did. Yeah, I did. So the rewards yeah. come when you do. Yeah. And the trust, the trust is important, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, to be able to trust that you can go to those places with that person and within yourself. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Yes. Mm. So love. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's the answer, isn't it? Love, love answer. and freedom. Love, love and freedom. freedom. Yes. That's Richard true. Bandley used to say, "Freedom of it. Freedom is everything, and love is all the rest." Oh, that's nice. That's a nice, uh, isn't it? Nice quote. Yes. Right, I've got one more, one more roomy quote to oh. share. Many years ago, my friend Sarah sent me a picture. And uh, she came into my life in a really weird way. She sort of just showed up in my life and went, I've been waiting for you for five years. Mm -hmm. And then for my birthday, the first year we met, she's very psychic, this woman. So she's been a bit of a mentor and a friend mm -hmm. and help. 
And she sent me this picture, and I didn't know where the quote came from, but it was a little seashell, and underneath it, it said, your essence is your wealth. And I used to have it on my website as my tagline, and I never knew it was a Rumi, from a Rumi poem, but it was. And um, so it's sort of become mm. my words to live by, to remember that your oh. essence, the essence of your soul, mm. which is love, in mm -hmm. everyone's yeah. soul is pure love, mm -hmm. is to, to keep coming back to that, that your mm -hmm. essence, your soul essence, is your wealth. That's lovely. And Connecting then, wealth, which is typically money, yeah. to the, your essence. To your essence. And yeah. That, that and your unique expression, which That's is lovely. the poetry and the music yeah. and the creative. However you want to, um, I suppose, authentically mm -hmm. and transparently communicate your essence to the world, is the absolute beauty of your soul. Absolutely. And that to me is... That's lovely. Yeah. It's beautiful. And so I know we've talked about love a lot, but I just want to come back mm -hmm. to you because yeah. we were going to talk a little bit about where, now that you've got the love thing sorted out, and mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, you know, oh. this is all going wonderfully. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about your like the career path? The career path. Because there's um, some big changes happening. Yeah, so um, I'm doing uh, two things, yin and yang, right? Yin and yang. Yin Balance. And yang. Yeah. See, he's uh, got it going on. So uh, thank you. Uh, the artist in me, yeah. uh, and that's one or two days a week, yeah. is writing poetry, taking photos, writing stories. Um, yeah, it's yeah. committing to, uh, to, so, to, to to the creative aspect. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is the coaching. So I help yeah. people with their life, life, through life coaching and business coaching. The life coaching is about finding freedom and love and, and, and helping people in that way. And I'm doing... A, as well as some psychotherapeutic training to yeah. offer, to deepen that uh, from the coaching into the counseling. Um, and then also, and very uh, importantly, is uh, sales and communication. Right. You know, how do you take products uh, in this time where we're in a financial crisis, how do you celebrate and share a product? Not, not in terms of trying to manipulate and Sort of force Can we customs. hire you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Not basically selling without shame. Sh selling, yeah. Yeah. selling in the exact same way that you just said. Honoring the essence mm. and then executing that into all the details, so that there's a, a clear line that goes from what what I really want to do, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, and then at the end you have an invitation. Yeah. A call to action based on an invitation. Mm. And if you don't buy, that's okay. Because my, my self-worth does not go up and down according to whether you say yes or no. So in a way, actually selling a product is like in being in a relationship with a lover. Yeah. But the only difference is you're offering the product to the consumer, where with your lover, you're offering your body. <laughs> <laughs> Which, selling your body. Same difference, you know. Yeah. Um, sacred commerce, really. Yes. Sacred. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Which I think we have... Yeah, and need, move away from a need for at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's people. It's almost there's so much um, this deepening into duality at the moment. Yeah. You've got almost like one half of society going more into that kind of sacred commerce, into absolutely, you know, moving with sustainable. The flow. Yeah, and then the uh, other half sort yeah. of holding on, like yes. you know, yes. we were talking about President Trump a minute yeah. ago, weren't we? Right. So yeah it's sort stretching of doing things well. stretching apart isn't it mm -hmm. and then eventually maybe that bit like an elastic band will snap, snap. <laughs> and then it will you know everyone be living in love and mm -hmm. <laughs> bartering <laughs> we've already yes. started bartering haven't we all this um yeah yes. conscious exchange that yeah. goes on it's lovely really lovely i think that if we anybody who's doing sustainable business can really own structure and categorization and befriend that mm -hmm then people who are very extreme when it comes to borders and boundaries will just become outdated. Mm -hmm. But we need to befriend structure, boundaries, walls, borders, because that's what gives, that's what protects the sacredness of Sacred what, what we do yeah. and allows us to make choices and take directions. Yeah. And I think that's what's not happening, yeah. uh, especially in the US. Yeah. There's this phobia and this uh, demonization of all boundaries and structures, mm -hmm. and that's really unfortunate. Yeah. 
Well, it's like knowing healthy energy field boundaries, isn't it? That's right. It's the first principle of healing and yep. transformation is right. you need to make sure that you've got healthy boundaries. There you go. Say no when you need to, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But also making sure that those boundaries are not generated as a result of fear. Yeah, exactly. Fear That's true. Boundaries and choice. So, you know, we yes. have to have this because it's dangerous, but it's actually just about a natural progression of what is the honoring, you know, honoring space. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, That's right. And again, coming back to the acceptance of all yes. of those that are in different different spaces and not demonizing right because the moment that you know someone becomes the enemy yeah, right. then why on earth would they not then act yeah like in a way enemy. that like the enemy that's you know right. if you give them that label and you're putting that energy to something then then you're right you're, you're yeah. going to be uh, and you're perpetually focused on fear and danger the jedi will perpetually be fighting the dark side yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly that's right so yeah so we yeah. have to honor that's very uh very uh, high level I'd say it's very, very important. Yeah. But again, you know, yeah. when we look at politics, it all yeah. is always the uh, microcosm of the macrocosm, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's always the, the, the blatant offering of, of energetically what is going on, not just in the world, mm. but inside the, the individuals. Yes. Inside people. Yes. The reflection. The reflection. Absolutely. You know, the separation, yeah. the differences, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, 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 you over there and those over there, and, mm -hmm. you know, this fear that if we you know god forbid accept others and accept others beliefs and accept others ways of living in the world that suddenly we're going to be threatened and That's endangered right. as yeah. a result of it instead of looking at the positive elements that these That's other people right. might have absolutely you know, and then going back historically and looking at a, a past life that that i remembered mm -hmm. in the uh i think it was around the 1500s and it was a south american one mm -hmm. where uh, being a, a young Spanish man and taken off to go and fight the the infidel and go off, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the church had dragged me off to, mm -hmm. you know, the heathens and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it, it was just the, the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And I remember being so upset because I could see the beauty mm -hmm. that these people had created. Mm -hmm. And yet all the church wanted to do was to destroy it mm -hmm. because they were different. Right. They were dangerous. And heretics. All, yeah, they were heretics, and all they wanted right. to do was to impose their rules. And I remember sitting as a really simple young man who'd been mm -hmm. a farmer yes. and speaking to the other men that were with me who didn't want to do this. They didn't mm -hmm. want to go in and kill these people. They didn't yeah. want to go in and fight with these people. Saying, "Why yeah. aren't we sharing? Right. Look at their crops. Look at their fields. Look at the you know the amazing things yeah. they've. If we actually swap notes with these people." And we found out what their beliefs were and we looked for the common ground and we looked mm -hmm. for the bit that was in the middle right. and then we all helped each other yes. to be more than, not imposing one on top of the other, yeah. but let's expand and share and co-create. Mm -hmm. How amazing it would have been. Mm -hmm. And I think I died in that lifetime just furious at the ignorance and stupidity that went with that separation. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the thing, was I think when we went to Peru, I think my most favourite, favourite thing of that whole trip was talking to one of the, um, the, the, sort of the, the older shamans. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he said, you know, here in Peru, we don't have a word for I have. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. And they said, uh, the, the phrase is I'm with. Yeah. That's beautiful. So they didn't have land. They didn't have mm. animals. That's beautiful. They didn't have possessions. That's beautiful. Yeah. They were That's just with it. Mm. And it, you know, so there was no ownership. There was no holding on to. An identification with. But yeah. That's my, yeah. No mind. Belongs. Yeah. So everything just flowed so that it, it just made sure yeah. that whoever had a need would have. Well, not have, because that wasn't their word, but would be with. with. There was always, you know, it was just a flowing. We come to you, come with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we need a bit more withness mm -hmm. same with on the, the planet. The Aussie Aborigines, they um, yeah. Yeah, don't own anything. It's no. very, very nomadic, very in resonance. Don't take anything more than they need and always mm. give back to the land. And they may have, you know, they have tribal areas where they do sort of exist, but it's there's no, there's no ownership at all. It's mo the land is mother mm -hmm. and mother provides. And so they give back to mother. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Very feminine. Um, connection that they have with everything in the cosmos and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it's the same with all the indigenous, isn't it? And we, we were saying the other day, you know, we need to learn more from our indigenous rather mm -hmm. than, you know, the way it's been is that we've been, 
the Westerners coming in and taking mm-hmm. over America and South America and Australia and all the colonization mm-hmm. has been trying to impose what we've thought is right, whereas if they'd sat back and listened to them, they would have learnt a thing or two. Mm-hmm. I think they'd have learnt an awful lot. An awful lot. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a very, a very <laughs> beautiful <laughs> lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, <laughs> so here we are. Here we are. Trying to bring balance in. Mm-hmm. And do things differently. So, what would you say is the main essence of your message and your coaching then? Um, uh, with my coaching, it's an invitation to discover who you really are, first of all, beyond the physical, emotional, and mental. And when you discover who you are beyond these three things that keep changing, you discover who you are that never changes. You know, some people call it spirit, soul, higher self, you know. Essence. Essence. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. Core. Yeah. Um, when that's the foundation, then you can develop relationships from that foundation with either your lover or your, your customers and clients. Yeah. Uh, and then you can do so authentically um, and by way of invitation. That, yeah. That's really the, uh, the thing. Love it. Yeah. So where can people find you? Um, I have my artist site, sergiopagani.com, and my coaching site, sergiosarkis.com. Okay, and obviously we will put the Thank links you very much. below the, Thank you. the video. Yeah. Thank you. And, and if you want to share with us any of your music mm. or anything I'd love, like I'd love that. to do that. Yeah, yeah. it's an honour. I love that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll put all links below. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. I always love a bit of creativity. Absolutely. Yes, and you have a poem book, a poetry book, and you read too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yes. please. Yeah, Amazing. Allow me to, uh, to read that. I would love to read some of your poetry. Yeah, thank I've you. always loved to read poetry. Thank you very Absolutely. Much. And can I just say that for anybody watching, if you're you know inclined or you know have a desire to write and want to share some stuff with us, we would love to hear it. We'd love to hear music yeah. and poetry. You know, we this is the, the whole idea of our platform. Is that it's conscious conversation uh-huh. so yeah. please do share and we do have a facebook page and facebook community as well wake ones community on facebook so you mm-hmm. can go on there and you can post mm-hmm. anything that helps raise the consciousness of the planet it's not just for us to share mm-hmm. the videos it is a community so please feel free to join that community and uh, open into some mm-hmm. conversations with us any topics and things mm-hmm. that you'd like us to cover as well on the show or if you'd like to be a guest please get mm-hmm. in touch Thank you very much for having me here, and uh, I really appreciate the space. And it's creative. Been wonderful to have you. So wonderful, Thank so you. wonderful to connect with you. Thank I think we probably we're not sure if we met no. many years ago. It's <laughs> nice to actually Thank meet and have a proper chat. Appreciate that. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. And to all of our lovely viewers, thank you so much thank for very watching. Much. Thanks for watching. Thank you.